Sugar has often gotten a bad rap for being the cause of tooth decay. And while it inarguably plays a role, perhaps other so-called healthy foods are culpable as well. So a lot of people ask, like, why is there an excavator in the back of the house? Well, that's not really what they ask. They usually ask, like, why do you have a missing tooth? Is fruitarianism like that unhealthy? And actually, I have another missing tooth. People don't usually see, and I have eight missing teeth in the back that were pulled out because they're wisdom teeth, which is just socially acceptable. Hey everybody, I hope you're all well. I wanted to give you another update, tell you what's going on currently, and also to address uh, the concerns and conversations about my teeth. So if you've been a raw vegan or a fruitarian for a little while and you've noticed that your teeth are starting to degenerate, whether you're getting cavities, the tooth enamel is starting to erode, where your teeth are becoming sensitive, you might start be wondering why and you might be blaming fruit sugar. Let me tell you, fruit sugar is definitely not to blame. You don't need to pull your teeth out. You do not need to get dentures and you don't need to do anything crazy. All you need to do is understand why your teeth are starting to degenerate and what you can do about it. Hey guys, I know I said I wasn't gonna do any more of these. I think that's what I said. But uh, this one sounds pretty funny. How to avoid cavities on a raw food diet. Oh man, let me guess, just brush with water because it's the perfect natural diet. Hey there, it's Sarah and welcome to vlog number six. Today, I wanna to talk about why I had to get my wisdom to take it out. You guys asked, why did I opt for surgery? And I only opted for surgery as an absolute last resort. But there is one main reason that I had to get my wisdom tooth taken out. And it's all due to the fact that I have learned one main lesson while eating raw. It seems to be a consistent lesson across the board. And that is, I assumed in the past that other people, other raw gurus, knew more about my body and the results that I get than I did. Fruit is a staple food in the human diet and has been consumed since our primate ancestry. So why would something so closely tied to humanity be causing us dental decay? Primates consume large quantities of fruit, and yet their incidence of dental decay in the wild is much lower than modern humans. Could primates be doing something differently than us? According to Reba Hernandez et al., the wild varieties of fruit consumed by spider monkeys have a sugar composition that is higher in fructose and glucose and generally low in sucrose. Milton also found the cultivated fruit you would find at a grocery store tends to be higher in sucrose. Similarly, when Milton analyzed several wild species of Panamanian fruit, she found the same sugar distribution in the wild varieties as well. Kubola et al also found similar results for wild Thai fruit. Chimpanzees diet are composed of more than 50% fruit and almost all the fruit is made up of figs. Figs are also primarily composed of fructose and glucose. So why does it matter? Well, if you look at the early bacterial colonizers that are involved in tooth decay, namely streptococci, as well as Neisseria, you will find that sucrose plays an integral role in their ability to adhere to teeth and form plaque. In fact, it is the only sugar they can use to form a dextrin-based polysaccharide, leading to plaque formation. Plaque is part of a two-step process that contributes to tooth decay, which also includes the formation of lactic acid which causes erosion on the tooth surface. After a few hours of pellicle formation, bacteria start to colonize. The initial colonizers are gram-positive, facultative, anaerobic cocci and rods, usually streptococcus species and actinomyces species respectively. The bacterial colonization is initially purely physical and is a reversible attachment. And with time, the attachment becomes stronger and bacteria firmly adhere to the pellicle. The initial colonizers primarily derive nutrition from salivary glycoproteins and simple sugars and continue to divide and proliferate, forming microbial colonies. 
As a human example, the Hadza of Tanzania focus their diet on honey, which is higher in fructose, berries, figs and tubers, as well as specially prepared baobab fruit, which tends to be higher in sucrose. So we're going to be talking about many different berry species, tuber species, which are underground storage organs. I always describe them, um, they often get likened to a potato, but I find that they're much more similar to jicama. Um, or even a water chestnut, if that, if that helps, although they're incredibly fibrous. Baobab fruit, we'll be talking about honey. Um, figs are also a very important part of the diet, especially for children, um, and legumes and nut species as well, and we'll get into meat. So very quickly, going through different food sources, baobab fruit, this is what it looks like when you open it up. Um, it has a hard shell, and inside you have all of these um, very, you have seeds that are covered in kind of a chalky white powder. Baobab fruit is consumed in several different ways. Here we have a picture of a mother pounding baobab seeds. The most common way is to take this is to take the innards out, take a pounding rock, pound it into a powder, and then winnow, winnow the powder. So what that means is that you have access now to the lipid-rich seed inside. So once you winnow this powder, uh, what happens? They, they use a they use a piece of animal hide. Is the seed husk floats away. So what you're left with is the fruit powder as well as the powder from the seed. Um, it can also be mixed with berry juice to make um, a Hadza smoothie, which is a really good weaning food. We have several different types um, of berry species. I just have three here, but there are about six species that are routinely consumed. Um, this is on a berry foray. I had one of my friends just show me the, the very small amount that she trotted home with to feed the three hungry mouths that were waiting, and then she came back to get a much bigger yield. Um, several different berry species. So how can you improve your chances of better dental health while still being able to enjoy the benefits of eating fruit? By selecting fruit low in sucrose, you may better your chances of avoiding dental decay brought on by the hybridized nature of modern fruit.